What's going on everybody, my name is Aiden and welcome back to another episode of Chicago Bulls Weekly where we take a deeper dive into the previous week that the Bulls faced, discussed, I guess, the awards given and look forward to the upcoming week the Chicago Bulls will face as well. Now at the end of the day, this is a week where I would say... I don't necessarily feel that upset about the Bulls, but I ultimately still don't think it was a good week either. Of course, you can put excuses in there, and I'm going to put some excuses in there for the Chicago Bulls. But with that being said, all said and done, still wasn't a great week. Still ended up losing more than we won, and still giving up a fair bit of points in the process. But before we get any further, if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow, and or subscribe if you are new. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls, their game that they played and the upcoming games to face and what do you think the Bulls are going to go next week in terms of their record we had three games to look forward to this week ladies and gentlemen and we ended up going one and two so again it's not the worst week you ever face in your life but it doesn't necessarily mean it was the greatest week you'll ever see in your life either still really disappointing Despite the actual, I guess, week itself, there's just still ongoing issues the Bulls need to really focus on. But those issues weren't necessarily shown in that first game against the Washington Wizards in the NBA Cup as we win the game 127 to 108. Now, Washington are just as bad of a defensive team as the Bulls, and they showed it in this game. A really, really poor second quarter from them, I believe, led the Bulls to kind of dominate and win the game. The Wizards with some hard, very unnecessary fouls towards the end of the game as well. But ultimately just led to a team that's a bit salty. You could maybe make a case of personal pride. Still, the Bulls win the game. We move on to the next one. And the next one wasn't so pretty. As we lose the game to Orlando, 133-119 to on the second night of a back-to-back. Now, the reason why I'm not upset with this loss is because it's a second night of a back-to-back. Now, I expect great teams to win both nights of a back-to-back. I expect teams that are competitive or supposed to win, like what we were supposed to be last season... I expect them to win back-to-backs. I know this Bulls team is not supposed to be the best team in the league, not supposed to be a competitive team. I know that we are being competitive, but we're not supposed to be. The narrative isn't like that this year, ladies and gentlemen. So I fully understand when the Bulls fall in back-to-back situations, maybe when they come out flat, maybe they come out a little bit hesitant, maybe they just don't have the squad depth or the skill to really get over the line on that second night of a back-to-back. Now, that doesn't mean I think we're going to lose every back-to-back in the world, but when you face Orlando, a good team in their own right, a really strong defensive team as well, I expect us to lose those type of games. Not to mention, I still don't like our defense because Orlando's not the best offensive team you'll ever see, but they still managed to drop 133 points on us. The big game this week was against the Boston Celtics. This was kind of a win or go home situation in the NBA Cup. And we were close. We were close. We were so close. But we couldn't get over the line. We lose to the Boston Celtics, 138 to 129. We are now eliminated in the NBA Cup. We will not play any more games in the tournament. We had a much better standing this time around than last season when we were supposed to be competitive. Still... Elimination is elimination. We're not going to Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to the casinos. We're not winning the lottery. We are sitting in Chicago, or I guess in this case, yeah, we are sitting in Chicago. Our next game is in Chicago, and we're contemplating what went wrong. Now, again, when you face the Boston Celtics, you are facing the best team in the league, in my opinion. I believe they are going to be the front runners to win the championship again. I think they're that good of a team, and I think they're going to have the longevity compared to the teams that are ahead of them at the moment and teams out west. I really think Boston are the team to beat this season. And we got close, man. We got close. Again, this Bulls team is projected to not make the playing tournament by a lot of people. So to be close like that against Boston, putting up a heck of a fight is something to be respectful of. And I respect the Bulls for that type of effort. Nonetheless, we still gave up 138 points in this game. And we did lose and get eliminated. So it's never a nice feeling to lose that. I blame some of it on the Bulls' defense. Of course, I blame some of it on the coaching staff. Uh, At the end of the day, you could put the blame down to anybody. It's still a loss in the books. And that will always hurt. So a tough pill to swallow there. But it's one that we've got to move on from. Speaking of, we now have awards to give. Must improve of the week. Defensive player of the week. 
Will anyone get that one? Sixth man of the week and player of the week in general. And I think this week has been pretty straightforward. When you get three games in a week, it's easier to decipher who are the awards that should go to each individual, if you know what I mean. Starting off with the defensive player of the week, because I think this one is pretty straightforward. Since we are still such a liability on the defensive end, it will still go to no one. When you're the worst defense in the league, I can't sit here and just point one person out as the great defender that they are. Maybe there is one person out there. I really enjoyed a lot of the hustle that you might have saw in the Wizards game. Regardless... We're still giving up a big chunk of points, and that has to be addressed if you want to get Defensive Player of the Week awards. It's as simple as that. So until that gets fixed in a week, I'm not going to give the play a Defensive Player of the Week award. Call it a cop-out. Call it an easy thing to do. I don't care. The Bulls give up points too easily, so I can skip this award just as easily if you get my drift. But I will give the must improve of the week. And this is actually going to go to one of the starters, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give it to Kobe White. Now, I'm completely aware Kobe White has a wrist injury. And that definitely affected his last game. But I felt like personally, even before that wrist injury, he just wasn't really in the groove as you once saw. I think he had one game where he dropped over 20 points. And that's always nice to see from Kobe White. But we've seen Kobe White take over games. We've seen Kobe White become our number one option. We've seen Kobe White develop into a superstar player on any given night. Not necessarily consistently, but any given night, you can see Kobe White become a superstar player in this league. And I just think this week wasn't his week. Now, am I going to sit here and bash Kobe White and say that's the end of his time here with the Chicago Bulls like I know a lot of people are so desperate to do? No, I'm not doing that. What I will say is I expect better. I expect better defensively from Kobe White. And I think we can see more from him on things like playmaking and things, maybe consistency in shooting and stuff of that nature. Maybe getting to the line. Just basic things that I know Kobe White can do and does do more often than not. So I'm not worried about Kobe White whatsoever. But that's personally who I give the must and prove to. You can, again... You can, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's what that's for you guys to decide. Maybe you give it to Josh Giddy, who didn't have the most amazing week out there, but I personally thought made a little bit more of an impact. Maybe you could give it to one of the bench guys. There's a lot of options you could give it to when you go one and two. Me personally, I just think Kobe White, I expect a little bit more out of him for what I saw last season, and it's as simple as that. My, uh, I guess. Sixth man of the week, I'm just thinking of which ones I gave out, is going to go to Taylor Horton Tucker. Unbelievable scoring off the bench this week. Three games, pretty solid in all three of them. Um, I personally think he's played not enough minutes in these, three, in these three games. And maybe the minutes should be bolstered up if he's going to keep on producing that level of scoring in the future. But yeah. Sometimes scoring really is the difference in the, uh, giving an award. And for Taylor Horner Tucker, that's what I saw this week. So congratulations. My player of the week is Nikola Vucevic. I thought he was really good this week. Once again, showing how consistent he has been all season. Made four straight threes, I believe, against Boston. He was just on a different level. He has been on a different level than last season. He's fighting, he's fighting for a trade, I personally think. But nevertheless, it's going to benefit us either way. So congratulations to Nikola Vucevic. Those are the awards that we have to give out. Move on to what we have looking forward to. Starting off with a team that we have actually lost to already in this season, the Brooklyn Nets. This game is at home. Brooklyn went on an unbelievable winning streak away from home um, in their recent form. I'm not sure if the, the exact record or anything like that, but I think they beat three of the best Western Conference teams all away from home. So you've got to give credit to this Brooklyn Nets team. A lot of people didn't expect much from them, but in the way that I'm seeing it, at least, they're surprising a lot of people. Maybe it's just like how the Bulls are surprising some people now as well with how well our offense is going. We'll see how we go against Brooklyn. We face the Spurs away from home next. Um, the Spurs are a very, very, very uh, interesting team as well. Obviously, when you face Victor Wenbanyama, that's never an easy sight. We'll see how we fare in that one. And then we got the Pacers, Halliburton and them all. Um, after that on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Another back-to-back -back this week, ladies and gentlemen, but still only three games to look forward to. The Pacers are a team we're always going to have close fights with in my eyes. I see them as a division or a competitive rival. And yeah, I'm looking forward to that game because I think it'll be very, very tight and a very entertaining game to watch. What do you guys think? I think we're going to go one and two again this week. Just our defense will let us down as per usual. 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. Take care, and peace.